everybody, Mr. Mack here with your short mini lesson on the election of 1912. So it's really, really rare that I look at an election and say, man, that election is so important that I need to do a specific lesson on it. But this one really is. So the, one of the reasons why it's so important is because it's going to have three presidents involved. Uh, Theodore Roosevelt, who had been president, William Howard Taft, who was currently president, and then Woodrow Wilson, who would become president. Let's start by giving a short introduction to each one of these guys. Theodore Roosevelt, you know a ton about him already, but he was president from 1901 to 1909. Theodore Roosevelt became president because he was William McKinley's vice president. William McKinley gets shot in the stomach and dies, and Theodore Roosevelt in 1901 becomes president. Now, Theodore Roosevelt gets elected in his own right, um, and serves what is really his first term in office from 1905 to 1909. And whenever he gets that term, he, he makes a statement that he's going to basically regret forever. And he says that he won't run for a second term in office. So Theodore Roosevelt could have been president for a long time, but he chooses not to run for that second term, even though he could have. And he will regret this basically from the second that he says it. So Theodore Roosevelt serves, like I said, 1901 to 1909, and he does a ton of stuff. Uh, he's known as a trust buster, right? He gets the Panama Canal um, and, and really just a, a litany of things that Theodore Roosevelt accomplishes while he is in office. And, and if this is going to be a mini lesson, I can't get into all of them. But whenever Theodore Roosevelt is, is preparing to leave the White House, he chooses his secretary of war, William Howard Taft, to be his replacement. Um, and William, How William Howard Taft will win the Republican nomination for president in 1908 and then eventually will win the election. So a little bit about William Howard Taft. William Howard Taft is famous for a couple of things. One, he weighed 350 pounds. He was a big boy. And the thing that he was most famous for might be a myth. Uh, it's getting stuck in a bathtub at the White House. That's that's the, the big William Howard Taft story. We don't know if that happened for sure, but we do know for sure that they did have to get new bathtubs in the White House when William Howard Taft moved in because he was so big. The other thing is that William Howard Taft really didn't want to be president. Um, he wanted to be the uh, the chief justice of the Supreme Court, but his wife, William Howard Taft's wife, really wanted him to be president. She was a very pushy, um, maybe a little bit conniving and ambitious woman, but he also, because Theodore Roosevelt wanted him to do it, people seemed to kind of push him in that direction. He was willing to do it. Now, Taft really never overcomes the idea the the image in the in the minds of the american people and in the minds of the media that he's just a puppet for theodore roosevelt and you know the joke about william howard taft while he's president is taft take advice from teddy um which is kind of kind of the truth but the problem is that theodore roosevelt really is not a fan of what william howard taft does once he gets into office he thinks man i got this guy this job and now he's not even doing what i would have done but the problem is that nobody is theodore roosevelt and nobody does things exactly like theodore roosevelt would have done them so william howard taft again i could get into a ton of stuff reasons why specifically um it had to do really with the with trusts and things like that um, among other things, I could get into the specifics of it, but if we're going to keep this short, just know that Theodore Roosevelt really doesn't approve of what William Howard Taft does as president and comes out against him, and this ruins their friendship, and that's that's a Im really important thing to remember here. Taft and Roosevelt are essentially best friends, um, and this is going to really – eventually they'll make up, but, it, but it's never the same. Um, the – once Roosevelt starts to insult William Howard Taft um, and then comes out and competes against Taft, Taft uh, Roosevelt famously says, my hat is in the ring. And uh, he, he opposes Taft for the election in 1912 on the Republican side. Uh, now, on the Democrat side, we have Woodrow Wilson. Woodrow Wilson was a former president of Princeton University. He's an academic type of guy. If Theodore Roosevelt is a very practical, get-things-done type of guy, 
Uh, Woodrow Wilson really is kind of the opposite. He is a, uh, you know, he's he's very much a guy who comes from academia. He comes from colleges, uh, and that's that's he has a very professorial type of type of way about him. He's very very different from Theodore Roosevelt. And you'll really see this highlighted whenever the First World War breaks out and Woodrow Wilson is president. Because what these guys don't understand is that they're actually competing to be the leader of America when it enters the largest war in human history. And Woodrow Wilson is very much anti-war, where Theodore Roosevelt is very much pro-war. You don't hear a lot of pro-war guys anymore, but Theodore Roosevelt would just straight up tell you, yeah, war is awesome and I like it. Woodrow Wilson is the total opposite. And so the way that we see this, Woodrow Wilson feels like he is essentially someone sent by God. His father was a minister, and Woodrow Wilson sort of sees himself as a minister in the arena of politics. And whenever the First World War breaks out in 1914, Woodrow Wilson will be president, and when he runs for re-election in 1914, 15, he'll, he'll be saying, he kept us out of war. That will be his tagline. He kept us out of war. Now, in 1917, eventually, uh, Wilson will get reelected in 1916. But in 1917, Wilson is going to have to enter the war. And when we get into the war, and this is where you see sort of the heart of what Wilson wants, he wants to essentially make war illegal. He wants to create a league of nations where countries come together and talk out their problems. And it will get created, but America doesn't join. That's a whole nother a whole nother lesson. But again, Woodrow Wilson in a lot of ways is sort of like the peace candidate and the high-minded candidate. And you see that really possibly because he comes from colleges. And Woodrow Wilson is going to get the nomination on the Democrat side. So by hook or by crook on the Republican side, William Howard Taft gets the Republican nomination. A lot of people feel like, and there is a good bit of evidence to support this, Theodore Roosevelt kind of got gypped out of that nomination. He probably should have been the Republican nominee. And if he had a, if he had been, he probably would have won. But as it stands, Theodore Roosevelt is not the Republican nominee. William Howard Taft is. Woodrow Wilson's the Democrat nominee, and Taft is on the Republican side. But Theodore Roosevelt is not one to back down from a fight. And he goes and joins the Progressive Party. Now, you remember, this is in the height of the progressive movement, that movement of people trying to make things better for working, uh, really just for normal people, right? You had the muckrakers who were revealing the bad conditions in the meat industry and taking pictures of tenement houses and lobbying for women's right to vote. And Theodore Roosevelt was all in on all of this stuff. So he becomes the presidential candidate for the Progressive Party. But very soon, it becomes known by a much, much better, uh, much, much better known, and let's be honest, a much, much cooler name, the Bull Moose Party. And the reason why it's called the Bull Moose Party is because Theodore Roosevelt, when asked while he's running for the Republican nomination, they say, a uh, reporter says, Teddy, how you feeling? He says, I'm as healthy as a bull moose. And, uh, and and from then on, he, he's known as the Bull Moose. And so the Progressive Party become gets the nickname the Bull Moose Party. And speaking of the Bull Moose title, this is the election uh, whenever Theodore Roosevelt is campaigning for himself, right, to be the president again in 1912. <sighs> He is on his way to make a speech, and he's riding in an open-top car because apparently no one has figured out in 1912 that, hey, it would be super, super easy to shoot somebody in an open-top car. Uh, as as Theodore Roosevelt is making is making his way through a very crowded street because people loved Theodore Roosevelt everywhere he went crowds turned out um, he he's waving to the crowd and a man walks up and shoots him in the chest uh, Roosevelt you know obviously is taken aback a little bit but he coughs into his hand and sees that there's no blood and so he knows that there's no that he's not bleeding uh, bleed had doesn't have blood in his lungs. And he goes and he grabs the man who shot him and he, he says, hey, hey, no, 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 why'd you do that? Why did you do that? And when he sees that the man won't answer him, um, he lets him go. And by the way, the reason why the guy tried to kill him is because he thought that William McKinley's ghost told him to do it. So the guy, you know, probably nuts. Uh, but anyways, they, they want to take Roosevelt straight to the hospital. But Roosevelt says, no, I'm going to make my speech. 
um, his glasses case and in, in his 50 page or so manuscript that uh, that he had written his speech on slowed the bullet. And so the bullet actually never left his chest. Um, it stayed with him until he died and it actually slowed him down a lot. But at the time, he still had a speech to make. He goes to his speech and and as he gets there, he, he says to the crowd, um, I must ask you all to be very quiet. I don't know if you understand what's happened, but I've just been shot. And, and someone in the crowd, uh, someone in the crowd yells, you know, liar or cheat or, you know, basically says you're making that up. And Roosevelt, who was, you know, probably waiting on somebody to say that to him, you know, pulls his jacket off to the side and shows him. And he says, it takes a lot more than that to kill a bull moose. And, you know, I always say if I had been there, I would have just absolutely run through the wall because I love Theodore Roosevelt as it, as it is. But, I mean, this is him at his absolute best. But as the campaign goes on, it only it only serves to make the the torn friendship between Roosevelt and Taft even worse. They did trade insults with each other um, and, and obviously both insult Woodrow Wilson. And this election gets ugly. But I haven't even mentioned a guy named Eugene Debs, who was a well-known socialist at the time. Uh, Eugene Debs is going to be in prison at the time that the election takes place, but he has such a large following in the socialist community that Eugene Debs is going to get over a million votes uh, for for the nom- for the presidency in 1912. Now he doesn't win, but that's still a lot of votes for a guy that is in jail. So the election plays itself out. And the problem uh, for, for Theodore Roosevelt and for William Howard Taft is that they cancel each other out. Uh, the progressives, certainly they vote for Roosevelt, but even some Republicans vote for Roosevelt. Um, and Roosevelt actually beats Taft. Uh, in, the, in the end, um, Wilson is going to come in first. Roosevelt will come in second. And um, and Taft will come in third. And I mean, that that's a, that's a big fall for a sitting president. Taft at the time has what you call the power of the incumbency, which means that if you're the sitting president, you really have an advantage over the people that you're running against. But that wasn't the case for Taft. And he never did have the charisma or really even the desire. Remember, this wasn't even a job that Taft wanted to do. But good news for Taft is that in the 1920s, he will actually get appointed as the head of the Supreme Court, and he will get that job. He's the only guy ever to serve as the uh, as a Supreme Court justice and a president. So in the end, Woodrow Wilson is going to win this election. Really, he's going to get a lot of electoral votes. He'll get 435 electoral votes. Theodore Roosevelt will win a respectable, something like six states, uh, actually, yeah, six states, um, and get 88 electoral votes, whereas Taft will only win two states and get eight, get eight electoral votes. And the rest of the states went to Woodrow Wilson. So in the end, Woodrow Wilson becomes president and will be the president. The reason why this election is so important, Woodrow Wilson is the president that will lead us into World War One. He'll keep us out of World War I from 1914 to 1917, through the sinking of the Lusitania, right? Even though Germany sinks the Lusitania in uh, 1915 with American passengers on board, Woodrow Wilson still doesn't enter the war, and Theodore Roosevelt almost definitely would have. Um, and he he makes fun of Woodrow Wilson mercilessly uh, for not entering the war. At one point, Theodore Roosevelt goes to the White House whenever World War I is about to break out and, and speaks with Woodrow Wilson. And, and Theodore Roosevelt says, please let me go and fight in the war. Keep in mind, by this point, Roosevelt's something like 55 years old. And he says, please let me go fight in this war. Please let me go fight in this war. Let me form another division of the Rough Riders. And, and he says to Wilson, if you let me go and fight in, in this war, I promise you I'll never come back. And you won't have me making fun of you and insulting you in the papers. And he was joking, but not that much, right? Roosevelt probably has a pretty good idea that if he goes and fights in the Great War, he's going to die there. Woodrow Wilson says no. And a lot of people think that, one, you can't have Theodore Roosevelt, a former president, one of the most beloved presidents in American history. You can't have him going and dying in World War One, But... A lot of people also think that Woodrow Wilson knows if Theodore Roosevelt goes and fights in that war and then comes back, he is going to be so popular that he'll almost definitely, definitely win the election in 1920. Um, But the problem is that Theodore Roosevelt would never make it to that point. 
Theodore Roosevelt is going to die. Um, he's going to die in 1919. He's going to die in his sleep. And uh, one of his friends will famously say, death had to take Theodore Roosevelt in his sleep because if he had been awake, there would have been a fight. You know, Theodore Roosevelt, the adrenaline junkie um, who loved a good fight uh, in the end dies, uh, dies young and uh, dies at the age of 60. A lot of Roosevelt's did. Woodrow Wilson won't make it much longer uh, either. Woodrow Wilson dies, I believe in 1923. He had a series of strokes uh, in the last year of Woodrow Wilson's uh, White House. His wife was basically running the show. Um, But by the 1920s, William Howard Taft Um, That poor guy will finally achieve his dream of being a Supreme Court justice. Uh, But uh, but, uh, just the way that I'll end this story, eventually Roosevelt and Taft, they did make up. Their friendship was never the same, but they did make up. At Theodore Roosevelt's funeral, the last person sitting at his grave after everybody had left was William Howard Taft. And he sat and he wept. Because he missed his friend so much, and he knew that politics had ruined what they once had in their essentially best friendship. So this was the election of 1912, one of the craziest elections ever in American politics.